Hello everyone, this is John Gruber with F5 Networks. I thought I'd share uh, just a little cool stuff that's going on with some of our proof of concepts with our Access Policy Manager. As you know, Access Policy Manager can function as a full-featured SSL VPN. And if we're looking at the GUI now, let's talk about some things that you'd have to be able to set up in order to uh, build an access tunnel. Now, one thing you have to decide is whether it's going to be full tunnel access or whether you're going to do split tunneling and inject routes into the remote client. So as you can see from these screens, there could be lots of things you need to set up. For instance, on the clients themselves, you'll need to dictate what servers they'll use for DNS or their DNS search suffix. So there's all these things we kind of pre-can and set up, including, let's go down here for a second, the address pools from which the clients were pull. Now, the interesting thing about all of these settings is what happens if I don't know them priori? So I don't know them before I want to set up these sessions. This is where the flexibility of Access Policy Manager as a full featured SSL VPN really comes to shine. So for a second here, let me transition from this idea of static network configurations for clients. So let's get away from that and look at the visual policy editor for APM. As we pull up this policy, one of the things you'll notice is we can do dynamic configuration uh, using the VPE. For instance, in this step, we can have a very basic step that pulls uh, from some other source for authorization. Uh, have a step that does things like sets dynamic ACLs, things that set your DNS configuration decides whether or not this is split tunneling or not and and if it's not split tunnel or full tunnel go ahead and establish the tunnel conversely if it was a split tunnel do the network route injection towards the client and then establish the tunnel so this whole kind of policy management isn't can it can be used not just to say I can establish resources but also to use dynamic configuration Now the next question that would come to mind is how did I get all of that data dynamically in order to use the VPE to put those things into my network access session? Well, the VPE by itself supports being able to populate those stuff from Active Directory or from Radius, but what if I want to do it based upon an external service so I don't have to replicate or build whole systems around those those things like Radius or, or Active Directory? This is where APM's ability to live on top of a full-fledged application delivery controller shines. Here's a typical job using our business logic, our iRules as part of our ADC, to be able to do things like redirect to a web service so that when an HTTP request comes in and I don't have all the information I need, I'm going to send the client to a web service, and if the web service is pre-populated with the session in this case, um, I'll collect the information from the remote web service, use that, be able to inject that back into my visual policy editor and to set up my network access. When you don't, when your SSL VPN solution doesn't have all of this configuration or ability through things like an ADC business logic, through our iRules, then it's really hampered in what it can do and you're stuck with the functionality of your SSL VPN to what the provider supports. Here we can generate complete supportable solutions based upon external systems so that you get the access you want on the fly. We grab web request methods coming in, we grab responses, we can do what we need to in the business logic to make your solution your solution. So here's our demo portion. Here's a typical Linux desktop. Um, this is a Firefox browser. It could be Windows with Internet Explorer. Um, this will work with any SSL VPN client that's supported by APM, so Linux or Mac um, or Windows. All of them work. Uh, doing this for the sake of ease of showing it, let's let's just very quickly show that my client has regular kind of setups. Here's the, doing a DNS query, and you'll notice my DNS server is set to a disconnected network, an internal host. So very much looking like DNS would be set for local DNS for you know someone in their home or someone in their their enterprise. So next, let's take a look at the interfaces on this machine before we've done anything. I have uh, an Ethernet interface, again, set to a local IP address inside of uh, a network. 
Uh, let's take a look at the routing table. The default route points out to a gateway off of my typical Ethernet interface. So pretty wide network access like you'd see for somebody connected to their home or connected to their, their office machine. And we're going to come over here and we're going to go to the URL for our SSL VPN. Now you'll notice that it didn't establish the SSL VPN session. That's because this proof of concept dictates that I need to see the presence of a session from a third party application. We wrote a little web application that's going to have session information here and I didn't see it. So I needed to see the person logged into this particular service. Now on our service we're going to create two different user accounts. The first one is going to be user John. John will get a specific IP address. Uh, he'll have specific DNS settings. He'll have um, specific ACL set for him, but you'll notice he's going to be a full tunnel, which means everything he's going to do is going to go through the SSL VPN. And we'll, we'll test his access here in a second. We'll log out as John, and then we're going to log in as user Bob. Bob's going to get an entirely different set of dynamic network access configuration. He's going to get a different IP address. He's going to get a different set of DNS servers, different DNS search suffix. He'll have a different ACL set for him. This time, we're going to set up a split tunnel and demonstrate that we'll leave his default route alone, but we will inject three Class C routes through the SSL VPN so he can get the very specific network access pieces on the back end. Again, these are our dynamic network access configuration items for users John and Bob. Um, now that we're going to show that you know what we're talking about, let's log in as John. Okay, I've established a session which was a requirement for SSL VPN now. Uh, notice I could just launch it again, but let me do it another tab for convenience. Hit the exact same URL this time because I'm logged into my third party application. I'm starting my SSL VPN connection directly. Now we could show a lot of details right here from the default web top, but let's make sure we're showing no tricks up our, our sleeves. First thing we're going to do is show the interface config. Yes, indeed, I've established a PPP adapter. You'll notice I've done it with the client IP address that was dictated by my dynamic config. Look at my route table. Because he was full tunnel, I took over his default route and I forced it through my tunnel. Good, that's what I intended to do. Let's see if his DNS settings took over. I'll do a, res a resolution. Indeed, I'm now using a DNS server on the other side of the SSL VPN tunnel as prescribed by my dynamic configuration. Let's uh, just make sure that that search suffix populated too. Just, again, no tricks up our sleeves here. Uh, indeed, you'll see that search suffix was added to his DNS settings. Now let's show through ping test. Now this full tunnel had wide access to a bunch of stuff, a bunch of resources behind it on the other side of the tunnel. I have connectivity. I should be able to get to all of these hosts with the dynamic config that I set up. And I can. Well, very good. We'll show the contrast with Bob here in a second. So now let's go over here and terminate our session for John. And we'll just close this out. Um, I'm going to log out of my third-party app. Again, if I'd gone to the SSL VPN session now, I'd be redirected. But let's log in as Bob. Now that I have a session established in my third-party app as Bob, we'll hit the front end of the SSL VPN again. Here we connect. All right, my tunnel's up. Uh, again, once again, we could show a lot of these details through the web top, but let's keep everybody honest. First thing we're going to do is look at our adapters. You'll see my PPP adapter and you'll see that it's coming from the client IP address that was dictated by my dynamic config. So far so good. Next thing we'll do is we'll look at the routes. Now he's not full tunnel. You'll notice his default route still goes out through his local interface. He can browse the internet, do what he wants, but here are the injected class C routes that he needs to go through his tunnel to reach. Very good. Now, did we overwrite his DNS settings? Well, let's just do a simple query and see where the server resolves this. Look, notice we overwrote it with Google's DNS, and sure enough, I got a resolution from Google's DNS. Let's try our ACLs. Now, he should be able to get to the first two of these. Yep, I can get to that. 
I should be able to get to this. Now this third one's denied by Eccle. Let's see if it, oh, it's not working. Exactly what our dynamic configuration said it should do. Uh, other resources that can get through the ACL, yep, I'm good. So here we have an example of APM using business logic with iRules and using its VPE to allow the configuration to be taken solely from an external system. It tracks the session from the external system. It gets all the data from the external system so you get SSL VPN the way you want it.